So now the Madhuda Raju is going to debate for monofocal IOL in pseudo exfoliation with heart cataract with astigmatism. Thank you, ma'am, for uh, making me part of this uh, wonderful uh, debate session. So, so why monofocal in uh, pseudo exfoliation? And not only pseudo exfoliation, in this particular case, brown cataract is what has been mentioned. The sir has already enumerated the problems you have with pseudo exfoliation. One is poor dilatation, zonular weakness, and also a fragile PC when compared to the regular PC. And also, you, uh, if you want to convert to an SACS, and you know that uh, you don't have good outcomes with uh, toric IOLs, so suboptimal outcomes are there. And uh, correcting astigmatism need not be only in form of IOL. You can also choose a laser vision correction in form of cornea in these cases, which is more safer. So why poor dilatation poses a problem? Uh, not everybody is as uh, experienced and as skilled as BP Kashyap, sir, and you don't have the digital marking systems. So maybe a beginner will have difficulties in uh, even dialing the uh, IOL into the correct axis. Uh, with a small pupil, and also the bag is already weak. So in these cases, we have to be even more uh, careful because the visibility is compromised. Coming to zonular weakness, zonular weakness is a very well documented uh, thing in pseudo exfoliation. Even with monofocals, with four to six clock hours of dialysis, we try to put a CTR, and uh, if the dialysis is more than that, you need to go in for SFIOL. So keeping all these uh, uncertainties into place with an unstable bag, you always have unstable outcomes. Sometimes you can also have dislocated bags three, four years after surgery. And when you want to realign this whole system, it is difficult especially when you put in a toric IOL. The only option you'll have it is to explant it and then put a monofocal IOL. So why not put a monofocal in the first place itself? Then fragile PC. So in these cases, uh, there are high chances that you can have a PC rent. So in those cases, again, toric IOL will not be useful. So you need to place a monofocal IOL because the PCR chances are documented to be three times more in these cases. So option of three-piece IOL and circus placement is more suitable for monoclonal IOLs or iris claw SF IOL. So this is one more point against putting this. And if at all you want to convert it into an SACS also, uh, it has a good option here, so lesser endothelial damage, lesser jonular stress, and safer and predictable, and toric outcomes are satisfactory, but not up to the mark with these things, because you always don't know how the wound is going to heal and what the patient is going to end up with. So my option is don't do a toric IOL. Instead, finish off your uh, surgery with the safest way possible with a monofocal IOL, and then go in for a laser vision correction. Wait for four to six weeks, assess the residual refractive error and astigmatism, opt for surface ablation. It's a simple and safe effective alternative to a toric IOL in these cases where you have multiple uh, issues, not only pseudo exfoliation, brown cataract, small pupil, and all these things. So let us keep it simple. Let us not complicate things. Thank you for your time and attention. Yes, so, Dr. Shirini. <laughs> Madhu, 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 just listen to me. When you can put the IL, I'm putting the IL after seeing that the uh, zonal ligaments are good. Yes. <laughs> If it's good, good why nose? not? Why, how do you say that is going to subluxate? Why do you say that you that the the, the aisle will completely go inside? Why, good. How do you imagine, sir? They're good today, sir. Tomorrow we don't predict. So let the patient enjoy that life, that good vision, for whatever time it is not dislocated. <laughs> Ultimately, what are you doing now? You can do it later, sir. <laughs> yes. OK, so the expert panel, is that Rishirini? Uh, uh, wonderful presentations, both of you. Uh, see, the thing here is uh, pseudo exfoliation is a progressive condition. Uh, I, I would uh, disagree with uh, uh, even Madhu uh, in putting a CTR in these cases because I've had at least three of uh, the cases in which everything went down. Uh, with the CTR, I will have to be taken off. So even CTR is not going to help in these cases. So 
uh, my choice for uh, intraocular lens in these cases is uh, uh, there are two. One is put a three-piece IOL in the sulcus and capture it. And if I have a three-piece IOL, uh, toric uh, correcting uh, three-piece IOL, I would definitely go for it. Uh, sir, as, as Madhu said, uh, it's, it's, see, it, everything looks okay for Sometimes it, it just goes off. So if there is a progressive uh, dislocation, see, if that itself is going to, see, wherever it, it is staying where it is, that is fine. It goes off, it's, it's going to be counterproductive. So that is uh, uh, one reason why e even if it doesn't go fully down and you have to explain it, uh, the astigmatism uh, uh, correcting effect of the toric IOL is not uh, going to uh, stay there. Uh, so to, to correct it, I, mean, uh, I would uh, uh, go with uh, Madhu in putting a, uh, a monofocal IOL and go for a la laser correction. Or uh, see up to one diopter, uh, 1.5 diopters, LRA. if you are actually marking uh, the steep axis and putting uh, the incision there and put an opposite clear corneal thing, you can correct up to one, 1.25 diopters. Uh, you have to mark it uh, uh, previously. So, so that is it. And uh, uh, so I would uh, uh, prefer to go for a monofocal IOL in these cases because uh, it is not predictable. In what yeah. case, uh, sir has wonderful hands, has uh, I mean, wonderful <laughs> surgery, sir. Uh, but the issue is, what is going to happen after that is not in your hand. So I would uh, uh, go for a monofocal IOL in these cases. And uh, uh, sir has definitely shown that it is possible to put an uh, uh, IOL in this case. Even if it is a small pupil, you can, uh, uh, the access placement and all can be done. No problem there. Uh, but with the search show that uh, phimosis is happening, the, with that phimosis happening, uh, pulling on the zonules, and it's, 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 it's going to decenter. If it is going to. Sir's case, it didn't decenter, well and good. But, uh, uh, but the take home message from my side uh, would be uh, to go for uh, monofocal IOL, and if it, astigmatism is uh, too much, go for a, a laser with vision correction. Thank you. So, uh, Sangwan sir, your take? Mm, yeah, I think we should understand in these eyes, the problem is with the endothelium and the zonules. So, the idea is to give a long-lasting good vision to the patient. So, if there are issues during the surgery, then obviously you, cannot, you may not be able to put the toric IOL or any kind of IOL. So, think of, uh, and also this phimosis or zonular dissonance or, um, you know, rupture happens over a period of time, like in patients with uveitis, in patients with these patients, 10, 12 years, 15 years, it is the bag which uh, falls off. So, you need, need to look at a long term and then uh, consider and don't underestimate the spectacle also is a good correction. Not necessarily you have to do lacy correction or a toric IOL. In uh, eyes which are sick, uh, you know, residual correction with the spectacles is also a good option. Secondly, the all patients may not have the same disease. It's always disease has a range, mild, moderate, severe. So you can make a choice based on what are the, what are you dealing with a given patient. Thank you. Thank you. Thank so you, the take-home message is we have to see the range. And as per the range of the pseudo-exfoliation, we should decide. So thank you.